Greetings, friend. I'm going to show you the best way to solve this puzzle from round seven of the Sudoku Grand Prix. It involves hidden and claiming pairs. These pop up quite a bit. If you know how to look for them and how to use them together, like we will in this puzzle, you can solve Sudoku like this even faster. Click below if you want to give this puzzle a go. And with that, it's solving time. First thing you want to look at is you can see the seven cut across row two and this seven means there's only one place for a seven in block two and then with this one cutting across you can solve for one right there now we can take these sevens and go there's only one place for seven in block one solve that and then with these two sevens and this seven it's all for seven right here just doing a little cross hatching and after doing those sevens now we can kind of look over at the sixes we got two sixes here which means this has to be a six and then with these two sixes only place for six and block nine is right there and then we can take this six up we go along with these two sixes to solve for six in block three so far so good and now let's look at this three this three covers all three of these spots in column five the only place left to put a three would be right there which gives us two eight naked pair so i will mark that just to kind of show where the two eight is and then you'll notice since we have one through seven up here in row one, that's an eight, nine naked pair. So this is a naked pair, eight, nine. This also contains an eight. So that means the eights can't be anywhere in row one or row two here in block one. And since you have an eight right there, we can actually solve this cell now for an eight. And then the same thing, you can look here across this row and go, we need a two, four, or five. You have a two here in the block, a four in the column. We can solve this for a five. So that's a naked single, which leaves us with a four, nine. We'll come back to solve the four, nine later. But then this ends up being a two, four. And with these two fives, we can solve for a five right there. So we made a lot of work up here in the blocks one, two, and three. And now we want to kind of look down here in block seven. Uh, what you might notice is where can a five be here in row nine? Can't be in these three spots because of this five. Can't be here because of this five. And it can't be here now because of this five. So we can solve that for a five here in block seven. Cool. And now we're going to look, and this is kind of neat, and this is where the hidden pair comes into play. What you'll notice is you want to look across row seven. Where can two and a five be in this row. Well, it can't be here because of this two and five. And it can't be here because of two five here. And it can't be here because of two five here. So the only two places left for two and a five are right there. But this means a two and a five are the only two cans that can appear there. Nothing else can be in these two cells. That makes them a hidden pair. It means they're hidden among other candidates. You can eliminate all the other candidates that would have been in those two cells. And so it leaves us with three other candidates to fill row seven and be a one, four, or a nine. And since you have a nine here in the column, that's only going to be a one or a four. And so what does here is this is important. We did our hidden pair, very important. But now the nines are limited to block seven here in row seven and so what that means is this is called a claiming pair and i did a little snyder notation to kind of show since the nines are limited to two spots you want to mark that and then if you solve one of these cells you can solve the other for nine right away but more importantly what we're saying is since the nines have to be somewhere in row seven they can't be anywhere else in this block you got to have a nine up here, so it can't be down here. And this is huge. This is going to help us to do some more solving. If you got stuck in this puzzle, it's probably around this point. And what I'd say is, you know, send this puzzle to someone else. Ask them to subscribe to more hobbies and then see what they solved to get through it. Uh, but if you need more help in finding claiming pairs and hidden pairs, then download my free Sudoku solving guide. I cover all these definitions. I give you diagrams to work on, and video tutorials, short video tutorials, less than one minute, check out the pinned comment below. Okay, when you do this claiming pair, now we can kind of focus on these cells here. 
So if you look at this cell, what can it be? It can't be a one, it could be a two, but it can't be a three, it can't be a four, five, six, seven, eight. But now it cannot be a nine because a nine has to be in one of these two spots. So the only place left for this would be a two. So you can solve that for a two. And if you look up at this cell, you got the one, two, four, five, six, seven, eight, and now it cannot be a nine because of these nines. This has to be a three. So you can solve both of those right away. And then this would leave us with, can't be a one and it can't be a nine. This actually has to be a four. So we use those claiming pairs to solve all of those cells right here in this block. And now we can use this four to clean all this up because now that has to be a nine. That's a four. This is a one and that's a nine. And it's just gonna make this cell a four. We can remove the hidden pair colors right there. And now we can move on a little bit more solving. Where can a nine be here in the block? Because of this nine coming down, you can solve for nine right there. All right, and now you see, because of this one, this has to be your one, and this is gonna be an eight. And so now we have a full house cutting across row eight, so that's gonna be a two for us. Okay, let's look over here in column one. We got a one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight. We need a six and a nine. Well, I see a nine right here. So here's your nine and here's your six. When you're doing these competitive Sudokus, like the Grand Prix, you always wanna go back and try to do cross hatching after you, do some of the more complicated strategies because that's going to be the quickest way to get your solves done. Okay, and then with these two sixes and these two sixes, we can solve for six right there, which is going to help us out even more. What else are we looking to do? Let's look up column three here now. We need, it looks like a one and five. I got my one right there. So here's your one and here's your five. Awesome. With these two ones, and these two ones, whenever you have four of a can, can it appearing into a block, you know you can solve it. There's only going to be one possibility left. You can solve that for a one. All right, what are we looking for here? It looks like a three and a seven and an eight. Okay, well, I got seven there. I got the eight there. We're not solving those three just yet, but we can do some better, do something a little bit better than that. If you look at these fours. And you'll notice that the fourth can't be in either one of those two spots. And it can't be up there. So the only place for four in column eight is right there, which would give us a eight and a nine down here. Well, I got my eight right here. So here's your eight and there's your nine. Awesome. And now once we solve this eight, now we know this is your nine, that's gonna be eight. So I disambiguate these naked pairs, which is always looking forward to do. Look in the column and we just need, looks like a five and a nine, so I got my five here. So there's your five and there's your nine. Nice, and now with these two fives, we can solve for a five here, which is going to disambiguate this two five and help us with this eight and two. Okay, getting much closer now. All right, it looks like we need just a two and a four to finish column seven. I got a two there, so I know that's a four, two, four. I like doing that little zigzag. And then go across this row, there's only two possibilities remaining. We have three and an eight. So what's going to help us out? Well, this eight tells us that's your three, that's your eight. And now with these two eights, we know we can do an eight here and a three there. I don't see a three in block four. So you can solve that for a three. I don't see a seven in block four. We got that. And then there's going to be a seven right there. And the last digit is a two. I only showed you a little bit about how hidden and claiming pairs work. Check out this other puzzle to see some more. Please consider support me through my Buy Me A Coffee page. Do that link in the pinned comment below. And thank you so much for watching.